I've been using Studio One for a while now and there are always features that start to pop up that I am just obsessed with and I kick myself for not knowing them sooner. I'm gonna go over five different hidden features that I didn't know about Studio One when I first started using it and make sure you stick around to the end because I am sure that there's something in here that you didn't know. But if you did know all of these tricks, let me know in the comments below if you are a Studio One Power user. So if you are a Studio One user, I have free vocal presets for you. You can just scroll down right now, click the top link in the description and you can download those for free. You just drag and drop them onto a track inside of Studio one and it just works flawlessly. No third party plugins required. It uses all the stock plugins inside of Studio One. So now let's jump on into the DAW. So the first cool feature inside of Studio One is the chord track. And there are a couple things about the chord track that you might not know. So if you come up here to the top left hand corner of Studio One, there is a thing called Global Track Visibility. You can click on that and click on Chords and that will show up a chord track. Now if you double click in this region, you can actually write in your own chords. There is a chord wheel here and you can do all different types of chords, but that's not really what I'm interested in. You can grab audio and drag this up into the chord track and it'll automatically detect what chords you are using. So I have this loop here that sounds like this. So I can just select this and drag this up into the chord track and it'll automatically detect the chords that is in this loop. Now that is super handy if you're trying to like play things out on a piano or trying to track things out on a guitar, but there's another feature about the chord track that I didn't know for a long time and I am kicking myself for not knowing this sooner. I'm just going to drag in a virtual instrument here. I'm gonna use Serum and I wanna add a sub bass to this track. Go with basic shapes and just do, uh, you know what, for fun, let's just do a sine wave for now. So now I can select these tracks and I can just bring them down into the MIDI region and it'll automatically write the chords out for me. Now I don't need the chords, I just need the low root note. So I can just come in here and drag these and delete those. And then I wanna drop these down an octave. If you hold shift and down arrow, it'll actually drop those an octave. Another little secret trick for you. I actually might want to take those down one more octave. So now we have a sub bass underneath our little riff here. So another thing that you can do is you can take your voice and you can actually create MIDI notes right out of your voice or any other audio that you have in here as well. This is great if you don't have a MIDI keyboard or don't wanna use a MIDI keyboard or don't wanna write in your own MIDI or maybe you just have a melody in your head and you just wanna get it out there and get it into a synth. So I have a little melody idea and I'm just gonna press record and record my melody idea over top of it and I'll show you how to convert that audio into MIDI. So now if I select that track and click Command or Control and M, it'll open up Melodyne. So now I can just come up here to Algorithm and make sure that it's set at Melodic and then Redetect. And then I can select all these notes, basically snap them to the grid here. So now I have this track here that has Melodyne opened. The notes are where they're supposed to be. I can just take and drag this down into the MIDI region and it'll automatically make MIDI notes where Melodyne had detected the notes on the audio track. Now I can just create a really neat patch here. Two hours later. So another thing you can do is come down to the bottom here and hover over the loop active or loop selection. You can right click on that and then you could select loop follows selection. So now I have this loop up here and usually you have to click around and drag it to put it exactly where you want. But let's just say you were working on that synth part here. I can just click that and that loop will automatically follow that selection. What if I'm working on this bass section over here? that loop automatically follows whatever audio or MIDI I have selected. Such a handy feature. Another thing I didn't know for a while was the easy quantizing function inside of Studio One. So you can just select a region that you wanna tighten up and put more onto the grid. So right here I have this bass, and I just wanna put this on the grid just a little bit more. You can just select the audio and click Q on your keyboard, and it will automatically detect all the transients and select them and put them onto the grid. I'll do that for here too.
I can even do that for the guitars as well. I can select multiple and click Q and it automatically detects the transients and puts them into place. If you do want to edit the individual bend markers here, you can actually come in here and go into the individual bend markers and put them wherever you want. You can even change how they have been quantized. But most of the time, if you're pretty close, this will just get it right onto the grid and you don't really have to touch it. But if you do, you can just select the bend marker tool and you can just come around here and do whatever you need to do. Let's say the song is sounding really good and I want to bounce out the stems for this song. Well, you can usually click Control Shift and E and then you could select everything here and set everything how you want to normally. But there's another way of doing it. You can select the browser here and then select a folder you wanna put the stems on. Right here, I have a folder called stems on my desktop. And then I can just select whatever I want to bounce out. So if I select all these and then go to bring it into the stems, this option shows up. So if I just let go right now, it'll bounce all of those as WAV files. But now if I select shift, that little X will drop down and now I can save the WAV file with the rendered inserted effects. So if I have effects on there and stuff like that, I can bounce those out as well. Or I can bounce those out as an audio loop, a music loop, or just bounce out the MIDI file that's in there. So for this one, I just want the WAV files without any of the effects on it. So I'm just going to let go. Now the files it bounces out is whatever your project is set at. So if you just come over here to song, come down here to song setup, and here is like the sample rate, the resolution. If you change these and then click apply, when you do the same thing, it will drag that version of the files over to your folder. It's a super handy feature. I think it's way quicker than doing it the normal way. So remember when I was dragging files in here and there was an option for music loops? Well, music loops is one of my favorite features inside of Studio One, and if you wanna know what I'm talking about, click this video right here. In that video, I show you what my favorite feature inside of Studio One is and how you need to use it on your next song. Now, as always, go create.